Okay, rather than exchange witty banter about Scottish delicacies, I'm, I'm going to make a start. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your uh, interest. Thank you for your participation. Um, hopefully, you'll now get an opportunity to see what you can do with simple um, playing cards. And as I, I said before, um, uh, I'm going to keep this as quiet as possible. Ask any questions in the chat. Um, anything that you think of later, um, follow up with me. Um, so. The challenge. The, the challenge is that. Embarrassingly, in the 21st year of the 21st century, we are still having major accidents. Um, only last month there was uh, an incident in, in West Virginia. And you know, whichever part of the world you're in, whether you're first world or third world, there are still lots of containment incidents happening. We, we think we're smarter, we think we've got better technology and, and bigger data, but bad things continue to happen. So maybe we're just focusing our efforts on the wrong protection measures and or the wrong people. And people are a, a key part of this because generally we're all operating the same types of facilities, the same unit operations in the same way. Um, we have well established mature process safety the management initiatives, whether it's the CCPS or the Energy Institute or other organisations, but they may be limited to people within your organisation. They may not include external resources. And if you're outsourcing some of your responsibilities, some of your operations and maintenance tasks, then maybe those personnel are not necessarily covered um, by these initiatives. And we know that we are losing people from the workforce. We're losing operational wisdom. Assets are getting older, but those responsible are getting younger and indeed fewer. So. How do we engage the workforce? How do we? Um, look at our, our key human assets and get them involved. So gamification is, is a hot topic, trying to make learning. Interesting, so using familiar game principles um, to share knowledge, to retain knowledge. But the reality is that when you only have so much time, particularly if you're perhaps a contract organisation and time is money, then you perhaps can't indulge in some of the more involved um, games, whether it be board games or e-learning. And e-learning may work well in the classroom, but it doesn't necessarily translate into the field, particularly if you've got flammable atmospheres and, and you can't take electronic devices there. So another idea is micro learning, short, sharp bursts of knowledge acquisition of training of learning or whatever. And what we're aiming to do with these process safety cards is to combine the the, the comfort and the ease of gamification with the. Limited time span of um, the available resources. So the one of the goals is to put the knowledge into the right hands so that the people that are sustaining your asset integrity, the people who are probably most likely to either contribute to or be affected by a loss of containment. We want to use the cards to better inform them. They're not process safety specialists like many of you in this call. Um, they are experienced practitioners, but they maybe don't appreciate all the theory behind it. So we use the cards initially to help them remember that loss of containment events are real and can happen. Then with the um, scenarios that I'll show you later, we help them recognize the, the causes or the threats that could lead to these loss of containment events. We 
introduce simple barrier concepts so they fully understand the, the context and the criticality of the barriers and fully um, respect the hardware and the human protection measures. And then if they are concerned, if they need more guidance, then they can report those concerns to the appropriate resources. So as a responsible duty holder, as a responsible owner operator, you have to recognise and, and respect, acknowledge that these people have concerns. So it, it can't just go into a, a, a black box or some database somewhere. So respond to the feedback, acknowledge that contribution that they're making, but fundamentally the goal is to get the protection back to where it should be to recover that performance because that's that's what's assuring the integrity of the assets that's what's giving you that that, that those safe um, processes so we're using playing cards um, familiar cards that you'd play poker or blackjack or or whatever in and they literally are playing cards they are they are poker sized playing cards 52 of them each one has a separate loss of containment event on it. Um, the current deck has been developed based on research published by the CCPS and the UK Health and Safety Executive. Um, and we believe that this familiarity, this, this handy learning aid can grow organically to build a community of card players, shall we say, so if you go on the website, we've got a page, a feedback page where people can share their ideas, how they are actually using the cards. And, you know, people are, are very creative. They'll come up with new ideas, how you can um, use the cards. And at the, at the core of this concept, really what you're trying to do is, as we, we see from the art of war, know your enemy. The more you know about your enemy, the better prepared you are. But hazards are not your enemy. Hazards are part of your normal business. If you're running a power station and you're burning, um, you know, fossil fuels, then the fossil fuel has to be flammable. But you have to control that flammability. Or if you're making pharmaceuticals and you're using you know, toxic gases or corrosive liquids, that's all part of your business. So the hazards are not the enemy. What is the enemy is loss of control, loss of containment, and that's what we're trying to get across with the cards, trying to remind people, to inform people of their enemies, the common enemy, to make sure that you um, contain and control the hazards that are part of your everyday business. So, as I say, we've taken uh, from the CCPS, the HSC and other sources, um, primarily the chemical and process industry, but there, there's commonalities across different industries. So split 52 different loss of containment events into four different suits. So we've got degradation where you may have failure um, within the design envelope or under strength. Uh, discharge, where you're creating an open route to the atmosphere. Damage, which is external impact, dropped objects, flooding, wind, vehicles, etc. And then deviation, where you're basically breaching the, the containment envelope. You're going beyond the capability of the containment or you're overstressing it. But having this common visual language on the cards makes it easier to communicate and hopefully these cards will create frontline curiosity but also act as a catalyst to st stimulate conversation with their peers or, or conversations with um, technical um, representatives you know subject matter experts to try and get more um, guidance more more information so from the operational perspective, um, different ways we think you could you could use these. The, the simplest way is if you put a packet of cards in a workshop or 
a canteen or a smoking hut, you guarantee somebody will pick it up and somebody will start to play with it. People don't need to be told how to play cards. Um, but that that handling the cards, seeing the images, you know, gives us a sort of osmosis of awareness of these um, potential events. So that's the sort of crudest, laziest form of getting these messages across. More structured ways are, for example, toolbox talks. So in the toolbox talk, you could deal out the cards. Um, and, um, uh, you know, one person could. Um, sorry, just going to kill that. So um, in toolbox talk, you, you distribute out the cards. Um, and whichever card you get, you talk about your understanding, your experience of it. Um, in the US, you talk about pub quizzes. In the UK, a pub quiz is something completely different. So you could have cards with no titles or no names on it. And then you ask people, well, what does this card mean? What does that card mean, etc." Other thoughts, um, you could take the cards, punch a hole in it, and, you know, piece of string or a cable tie, hook it onto vulnerable locations as you do a plant walk round. You know, this, this dead leg is vulnerable to internal corrosion. This piece of pipe work is vulnerable to uh, corrosion under insulation, for example. So use them as somewhat disposable um, tagging systems. You could attach them to work permits. So simply, you know, this work activity could involve these type of loss of containment events. So be mindful of it. And then you could use them as simple, practical, portable, you know, fit in anybody's pocket. Inductions for visitors, suppliers could be tanker drivers, maintenance contractors, or more sort of long term outage turned around project personnel. Again, you know, handy pocket sized um, pieces of um, information. From the management perspective or the engineering perspective, they could be used to kickstart meetings. So many companies have safety moments, so a bit like the toolbox talk. Everybody's dealt a card. Um, whatever card you get, you've got to talk about your experience of it or what's your role in managing that hazard, for example. Um, and I guess that there's a sense there that if you are using these cards, people are going to turn up to the meetings better prepared because they don't want to be dealt a card that they can't understand or they can't explain. Another possible application, if you're doing, I've enthusiastically called this validation, but if you're doing a HAZOP or, or a PHA, at the start of the session, you deal out all the cards to everybody. As you go through the HAZOP and the PHA, when your card is discussed, you throw it in the middle of the table. At the end of the review, whatever cards are left either are not applicable or you haven't discussed it and you need to discuss it or you've got a card and you just weren't paying attention and you should have thrown that card on the table. Um, you could use them as you know, graphical dashboards, so categorising your incidents by one of the 52 types or one of the four suits possibly use them for, for simple hazard um, ranking or hazard potential. If you give each card a value and you look at your facility and say, yes, our facility is vulnerable to external corrosion or flooding or dropped objects, then you add together all those cards and that gives you a crude score that you can compare um, to um, other facilities or facilities in your industry or, or whatever. Um, 52 weeks in the year, so you could have one card or one topic per week, so have a, a, a campaign basis. Um, but the other thing you can do to, to create some, some context is over here, what I've done is to take the uh, 100 um, or 100 plus 
Chemical Safety Board investigations and group them by loss of containment event type. So you could say, right, all these investigations had an element of internal corrosion on them or had an, an element of fatigue with them. So you could give some context. Why are we discussing this card? Why are we discussing this topic? Well, the industry has experienced this kind of event or we have experienced this type of event. So given some some background, some um, justification to it. So the cards are creating the awareness, the interest, the curiosity, but to develop the understanding, we have bow ties or scenarios. So many of you will be familiar with the three questions that came from the HSE inquiry into Bunsfield. Uh, so Gordon MacDonald posed these questions to duty holders. Do you understand what can go wrong? Do you know what your systems are to prevent this from happening? And do you have the information to assure you they are they are working effectively? Bow ties are, are really good at answering these questions, particularly in this context, the first two questions. So what we've done is we've taken each loss of containment event and built a scenario sheet for it. So there's there's a sort of piece of text here with typical causes, and then for each of them there's a, a simplified bow tie underneath. So we're looking at not specific threats, but threat types, barrier types, each barrier type, whether it be human or hardware, active or passive, will have its own strengths and weaknesses. So we've we've given them a relative ranking of effectiveness and vulnerability. The key thing here is to focus on the degradation factors, the, the things that are going to create or enlarge the holes in your Swiss cheese slices, because these, these are what we want everybody to be mindful of and everybody to respect. So these are single page scenarios. You don't need bow tie software to um, to use them. Um, but it's a, a means to uh, capture all your concerns on a page and you can um, mount them physically in uh, prominent locations, um, control rooms, canteens, etc. Or you could have them online on the internet or SharePoint or newsletters. Taking the bow tie thinking, barrier thinking a bit further. Generally, what happens on the left hand side is going to be common to, you know, your industry or your unit operation or your application. Um, on the right hand side, the consequences, the effects will depend on the nature and the, the, the scale of the hazard that you are handling, whether it's flammable, toxic, corrosive, etc. So the consequences, you know, there's multiple potential consequences, but these are things that you can think of. You can build up your potential safety consequences, environmental consequences, asset consequences, production interruption, product quality, whether it's a food stuff, whether it's a pharmaceutical, you know, whether you've got regulatory obligations because you're handling alcohol and it's, you know, there are revenue implications on spirits. So the right hand side you can build up. The left hand side gives you a starting point, gives you a skeleton to increase that awareness to, to bring barrier based thinking into the organisation. But again, here, here are the, the key points. Here are the, the, the degradation factors. We, we must recognise the barriers are imperfect. They, they, they deteriorate as soon as they're put into service and they can be defeated. So you have your management systems to make sure that you sustain those barriers that they're in place, they are performing. So these yellow points, these degradation factors are what you want to, to highlight to everyone. The competence aspects, the document management aspect, you know, override management, calibration, all these things that are important because your barriers are not fit and forget. They are all vulnerable to, to different degrees to these degradation factors. The other possible opportunity is that 
you could actually build in some relative risk into your scenarios. So on a simple high, medium and low um, likelihood ranking, so how likely is this particular threat in your organisation? What is the scale of the loss of control or loss of containment? So for example, a, a erosion or corrosion may just lead to a pinhole leak. So you've got a small release, whereas a dropped object would lead to a large release. It's not an exact science, but at least it gives people a sense of, you know, how how likely high, medium and low is this threat going to be? How bad is this loss of containment going to be? Because the people on the front line don't always get involved in all the, the risk analysis and the LOPA and all the, the modelling that we do, but you still want them to be vigilant to the um, potential um, um, escalation and, and, and concerns. So again, you don't need bow ties to, to uh, you know, bow tie software to exploit these scenarios. But if you want to build up the right hand side, if you want to flesh out your threats and your barriers, then it's obviously a benefit. So, so far I've talked about loss of containment events. We've also developed some other um, decks. So perhaps specific threat types. So um, beyond your familiar um, hot work, naked flames, electrical sparks, there are 13 different recognised ignition source types. So we've put them into a pack of cards. Process safety management systems pulled together the best of OSHA, CCPS and the Energy Institute into some easily recognisable um, categories. Human factors taking performance influencing factors from the UK Health and Safety Executive, things that relate to the job, to the individual, to the task. Um, you could also build in either your own or your industry's process safety fundamentals. So for example, the IOGP have a set of fundamentals. Some people call them life-saving rules. You know, it's basically how to get your message across. And then another obscure but quite neat idea is to create many safety data sheets, put your chemicals on a really, you know, put your chemicals in your hand. So using the NFPA ranking for health, flammability, instability, special conditions, and the GHS classification for environmental, you can use these as top trump cards. You, people can carry them about, they could they could play games with it, but you've got that um, that knowledge in your hand. These work slightly differently to the loss of containment. The loss of containment is tied to bow ties, to one page summaries. These would work in a different way, but it's still the same visual communication, getting your message across succinctly and clearly. So in terms of deployment, these can be created in your local languages. So here, Rachel Cowan has neatly given us some uh, English versions, some Spanish versions, some Portuguese version. Um, other languages are available. The images could be adapted to suit your um, industry, or your application, whether it's drilling, mining, uh, renewable or conventional power generation, food, uh, fast moving consumer goods, pharmaceuticals, transport. It's, it's a platform for you to, to build your ideas on into this handy format. Um, the cards, the summaries um, can be branded if you want to put your organization's logo on it or you want to put on your um, company logo on it. Um, and, and one of the, the neat things we've got is you could put QR codes on the box or on the back of the cards and that QR code would take you to one of your pages on the intranet or um, a document, if you will. So again, given that direct link 
between the people in the field and the the knowledge source. So that's the the cards. The cards lead to the um, uh, scenarios, but the um, the the reality is you can have the cards without the scenarios or the scenarios without the cards. Um, and what I'm going to show you next are the online card tables. And again, these are um, you know optional. You can have cards, summaries, card tables completely separate to suit. So the card table idea um, prompted um, probably by COVID admittedly, but if you have a multinational multi-location facility, you can basically play cards remotely as if you were in the same room. Um, so we've uh, created online card tables, um, which I'll let you play with in the next few minutes. Um, so you can play whatever card games you want to. You know, again, how you use the cards is entirely up to you. They can be customized to suit. Uh, we would we would build the card table for you, and then you would um, you would manage it. So let me show you what I mean by an online card table. So um, here we have um, five, sorry, one, one deck of cards and four players. We'll just call them players for now. So every player has uh, a hand and they can drag their cards down to their hand. So only, only they can see their hand in the same way if you're dealing cards round um, a conventional card table. When you take the card from your hand onto the, the table, then everybody can see it. So in this example here, we could deal the cards out um, automatically. Everybody gets you know, three, four, five cards. Then you take it in turns that you've got to put your card onto one of these four piles. So for example, thermal shock, um, if you're not aware, if you're managing thermal shock, then you put it in the unknown column. Or here, uh, phase change, if phase change is not applicable for your business, you'd put it in that column. If overheating is well managed, you'd put it in this column. Uh, liquid movement, you know, um, rising and falling levels, creating partial vacuum. If it's not managed, you put it in that pile. So this is just an example. You can, we can, with you, build the card tables to suit your your thinking. So in this example, at the end of the um, game, shall we say, at the end of the session, you look at your four piles and you say, right, all these. Um, hazards, all these loss of containment events, we're not managing them. We don't really know about these ones, and you should be worried if there's ones you don't know about. These ones we're relatively confident that we've got under control, but you should still provide some evidence. And then these ones are not applicable. So this is a an, an easy, friendly way of sharing the knowledge of doing a, a real quick um, you know, um, assessment of the, the state of play for how you're managing your facilities. But this is purely an example. So what I want to do with you is, um, if you can, and I'm going to put this into the message, if you follow this link, It's going to take you to this page and then you're going to pick your first name. So I'm David, so I'd be in the D. You know, if your name is Ulysses, then you'd end up in the U. So if you go to this page um, and click on the, the button that relates to your first name. Now, I'll warn you, 
some people will find that their corporate firewalls don't let you do this and I'm trying to figure out a way around it. So what I'll do is I will um, share my screen. So if you can all find your name, that will take you to um, a card table and then just play about with the cards. Just get used to handling the cards. And like I say, if anybody's got any um, problems accessing it, let me know. I know some, if you dialed in on your corporate email address, it may, um, it may not let you get onto this page, um, but I'm going to try and figure that one out. So have a play about um, flipping the cards over. Right, so unfortunately Diane can't do it, but if, if Diane, if you just sort of, yeah, it's it's quite common that perhaps because this is seen as a gambling website um, corporately, it's um, it's not going to, um, uh, it's not going to work. So if, so whoever's got U and Z is quite active, but if you can, um, if you can um, play along or, or watch, I know it's not much fun watching other people playing cards, but essentially it's pulling down the cards. Only you can see your cards. Um, you can see other people moving about. So there, there's somebody's moving the cards about. Um, so yeah, I, I can see quite a few of you are, are struggling with this. Um, and, and to be honest, um, I, I foolishly didn't foresee that anything involving playing cards would be knocked back by some firewall. So um, leave that one with me. But um, ho hopefully you get the idea. This is a way to use the cards digitally, to, to, to use the cards um, uh, remotely. Still have that that um, you know have the ability to to have those um, conversations around the um, around the playing cards. So again, apologies if if it's not working for you. I'll try and find a table that's a bit more. Interactive, not you're not as enthusiastic as the first lot. Um, but that that is is the the principles that you're you're remotely you're, you're playing cards. You're using them to stimulate discussion. You're using them to, um, you know, compare and contrast knowledge, experience. It, it, Etc. Etc. So I'll I'll just leave those um, those websites live for a bit, so you can you can play about with it. But hopefully you can see how easy it is. It's just a case of drag and drop or drag and flip. Um, to to suit. So going back to the to the presentation, and again, apologies if you couldn't join that one. So the conclusions I want to leave you with. Firstly, um, people have asked me, what's the game? Well, it, it's not really a game in the same way that a pack of playing cards is not a game. It can be multiple games. It can be whatever you want it to be, but what it's intended to be is a toolkit to exchange knowledge between management and operations from the boardroom to the control room, from the top floor to the shop floor. 
it's there as this common visual language and people will be creative and, and people just like a pack of cards becomes poker or a pack of cards becomes uh, blackjack hopefully these cards will um, be applied in uh, different ways sharing the learning using universal images recognizable stylized icons but local languages to suit your local operations to suit your your local culture so you're all reading the same thing but but in in a slightly different language i really want to emphasize this this is not designed to be um something new it's designed to complement or enhance your existing initiatives having cards on their own won't make you safe that it's not it's not trying to encourage you to abandon whatever you've got in place just now it's there to help deliver it as, as to a much broader audience that than perhaps it already does um so you know it, it's definitely not there to um to uh, to to replace it and the goal here this barrier based thinking um, is about protecting the protection to look after the, the hardware and the humans that are looking after you. To understand the, the criticalities and the context, to understand the vulnerabilities and the weaknesses and make sure they are addressed. To be um, ad adaptable. To suit different unit operations, different assets, different activities anywhere where you've got um, loss of control, loss of containment, energy, materials. Um, you know, this is we're talking here about process safety, but at the heart of it, it it's asset integrity. You know, it, it doesn't just need to be about people. It could be about the environment. It could be about uh, product quality. Um, it could be about um, whatever is, is important to your business. So the takeaway message is that the, the cards create the awareness, the cards create the, the curiosity. The bow ties in the scenario provide the um, understanding. So that they, they enhance that understanding, give you that, that context and the criticality. So that, that understanding helps you know your enemy and if you know your enemy then you're prepared you're more vigilant you're aware of these degradation mechanisms the the competence documents maintenance calibration etc etc so that vigilance should lead you to a higher level of integrity for your protection but also for your assets so with that um i thank you for your interest um apologies the um table didn't work out as planned um so um a, a brief mention of costing so um the cards, the cards are, are physical, tangible cards. Some of you actually have the cards and um, some of you have maybe seen Elliot's video where he does the card trick. So these are these are real tangible cards in a, in a pack and um, the um, so we, we basically um, sell them in, in blocks and we ship them to um, wherever you are so you're probably talking about you know 20 odd pounds per pack the more packs you buy the cheaper it gets plus shipping plus um, any local taxes that you may have the scenarios um, you can either have them in pdf format or you can have the the native um, bow ties if you want to integrate them into your system so you're, you're probably talking about depending on how they are customized, etc. You know, a, a couple of thousand pounds and to customize the tables to suit, you, you're talking about, you know, a, a few hundred pounds. It, it really depends 
how much customization you want, um, how many cards you want, etc. But like I say, you can have the cards on their own, the scenarios on their own, and the um, the card, the online card table, on its own. So, thank you again. Um, now, welcome any questions if you want to put any questions in the chat, um, and I'll answer them or I'll I'll follow up with them. So, feel free to. Um, send your questions. Hey, hello, this is Jason Erdley with ADM. Um, I, I was curious, I, I know you mentioned earlier, but um, they're, they're the physical as well as the electronic cards are uh, customizable. So I know yeah. you had mentioned earlier, depending on what industry you're in, you mentioned drilling and mining, I believe. Um, if in 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 my company where we don't do drilling and mining um no, so sure, yeah, if yeah. We, if we were wanting to get you know we do a lot of food we do we do grain we do some chemical work um we can uh, how customizable I, I guess would be the question are the the cards and i know that jan cook is one of my peers and he he's he's bought a number of these already but I was just kind of curious about that. If if we were going to go forward and and try and you know um, use them in different regions of of the world where we have different operations, if we wanted to have a, a deck for the uh, our colleagues that are in India, uh, would be different than a deck for our colleagues in 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 some of the parts of the Midwestern United States. You know, it's a different operation, so. Um, I know that's a long question, but it was really no, just, no, no. I guess how customizable would it be? And, and you know, if, if we wanted to have them e even customizable between different business units. That that's that it, it, it's the same. It's the same principle if I can find. Uh, so basically, you know, the the the, uh, the idea is in its in its crudest, laziest form. The, these are cards that you can play poker with or blackjack or 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 whatever so the the outer edge the sort of um you know the the ace and the king and whatever um we, we leave that in so you, you can use it to play cards but what the words and the pictures in the middle can be whatever you want like i say the the, the standard deck has 52 different loss of containment events now some of you may be surprised there are 52 different ways to lose containment, but believe me, there are. Now, whether you could find 52 different um, uh, images or scenarios for your business, you know, that's a discussion we could have. One of the ways around this is is a bit like um, is a bit like you know these cards. So there's only 13 different ignition sources, so you end up with four four suits of 13 ignition sources. But fundamentally, it's all about leaving leaving the what they call the pips on the corners. You can put anything here. You you can you know th this could be you know this could be Gaelic. This could be you know um, uh, any language you want, and that image could be anything that you, anything that you want. Obviously, you know there's there's a cost in the the design of it, but. You know, if, if you want a North American pack, a South American pack, a Southeast Asian pack, it, it's all possible. OK, so we could, in other words, like if we had our own images and, and you have really nice images, much you know superior to what we have, but we do have some. So if we had some particular specific images for our organization, we could send you the uh, you know, a PDF or a JPEG or some sort yeah. of an electronic file, and that yeah. could just be uh, put straight onto, um, straight onto yeah. the cards. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. The, the 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 challenge that I will tell you, and it's probably bleeding obvious, is if you want these to be like proper playing cards, you need the images both ways up. You don't have to do it that way. You could have, you know, a single image in one or or orientation. Um, you know, but we've we've gone to the trouble of making these these images, you know, 
no matter which way you turn the cards up and down, you, you can still see it in the same way that playing cards do that. Yeah, so, that's a good point. So, but are are you able to do that, or then if if we were to send? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I hadn't even yeah. thought about that, but that's your. It's a good point. Yeah. So the one you were just on with the HSE, um, it you can see that the man, the 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 human figure is in both orientations. Yeah. If we had something similar, we could send you the one image, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you'd yeah. be able to do the mirror image yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You you right. just you just send me what you want, and I'll, I'll you know, I'll I'll you know turn it into something get, get, let you proof it because ultimately you and me don't want to run off hundreds of cards and find out that they're they're wrong so it's it's just like any other any other piece of of publication you want to proofread it before it actually goes into production okay great thank you um anybody else got any questions if you want to un if you want to unmute yourselves um, well, so not to be not to be the loud obnoxious American <laughs> but I guess I do have one more question <laughs> uh, go, fire away. <laughs> and it's true you can ask Jan it's true but I I, I guess I was wondering um you know I like the on I I wasn't aware of the online um, even though I know there was some trouble, I did get on with, with my phone, and I, and I do like that a lot. Um, do, do, do you also have uh, maybe some on either your site or on that site suggestions for um, how to use them? Uh, I, I agree that, that people are very creative and throw a deck of cards into a group of people, and it won't take long for a game to start up. But, um, you know, do you have maybe some suggestions or, or learnings that you've uh, – uh, receive from from users that hey you know here here's a game that we have used um so, here's, so here's some yeah. suggestions for you to you know strike up the um the interaction and the conversation right so um you know you you have to remember that uh, john is one of the earliest people who, who's really you know got on board with this so but, but we've only really had these um out there for for not a short amount of time but the idea is on this feedback page, people can submit their suggestions. So basically, that this would grow organically. So as as people get um, uh, uh, smarter, you know, uh, get uh, and you'll find the people in the front line will, will be probably smarter than you in terms of how they, they use it. So this will grow. So you you can see how other people are are using it. The other possibility is, um, you know, I, I I've just made some suggestions um of of how you could possibly use the um cards um you know one of the things that i would say and, and this is maybe sounds a bit silly but um the um if you look at poker or some other games the, the idea is to win as many cards as possible now maybe what you want to do is get rid of your cards and i don't mean that as in offload the cards onto somebody else the idea would be for you to you for you to manage the cards for you to basically take control of the hazards so games that they're called shedding games you know games that are actually um uh, you know rather than you you taking taking ownership of you know 20 hazards you're actually um you know controlling them and putting them back in in a pile um, I'll, I'll send the, the link to the ideas and the feedback when I send out the slides. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've, I've sort of given some suggestions how you might use them. You're all very creative people. You, you will think of some, um, some, some ideas. Does that make sense? Um, yes, hey yes, very good. Thank you. Hi, hey David. Yeah. Yeah, this is Gear Carlson. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, putting this on. Uh, I think it's a great concept. Could you spend uh, maybe 30 seconds, one minute, and talk about uh, leading indicators? I know that is kind of off the topic, but it's also a big part of process safety and a uh, big part of these discussions. Uh, and that's leading indicators. Uh, those are the 
the warning signs that you're actually getting uh, and that you have before you have an incident. Uh, could you just spend maybe a little bit of time talking about that? Right, so um, I, I want to say two quick things, one to Janet and, and one to Lorraine. I, I will come back to you about Lorraine wants to see with the human factors cards and I will send you the human factors cards. Lorraine and Janet wants to talk about um, uh, GHS card, so I will I will follow that up with with um, Janet and um, uh, Lorraine. So in in terms of um, you know the the discussion you and I have had gear about these um, these um, these bow ties is it, it, it was really to to try and um, simplify complex scenarios onto a single page and remind people that. You know we've got some robust measures in place, um, and the 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 performance of those measures is therefore critical to um, uh, sustain that level of integrity. So so however however you you measure that that performance through audits, through surveys, um, through testing, or whatever. Um, should align with um, with your um, with your leading indicators. Now, Ian's got his hand up, and Ian's going to going to share something with us, aren't you, Ian? Hi, David. If you unmute um, yourself. Hi. Um, so, so yes, having spent much of my life in performance measures for major hazards, I can answer your question quite simply. Look, leading indicators are the inputs. Uh, to get you the outcome that you need. Uh, so uh, the center of the bow tie is the outcome you want to avoid. Your barriers are the inputs, if you like, the, the things that must go right to prevent the outcome, uh, the adverse outcome, and they're your leading indicators. And you can set them, you know, wherever you want. But if you have an initiating event occur, you can class that as a, a, a leading indicator, but you're better to measure the performance of the barriers as the leading indicators. That's fairly straightforward with hardware. You can check it through inspection and maintenance. But when it comes to people, you've got to check the uh, how people undertake the uh, process safety critical tasks by behavioral safety programs, sampling, you know, workplace observations to check how they uh, perform a particular task. So leading indicators are the inputs. Uh, lagging indicators are always outcomes and, you know, usually bad outcomes. So you've lost control or you've lost containment. That's the simplest way I can put it. And um, just add that the API in 754 got it completely confused. They couldn't kind of get their heads around what's a leading and lagging indicator. Uh, so that's my two pence worth, David. Right, so apologies if there's anybody from the API here. <laughs> but, oh, no, uh, no, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't um, know, you know, in, in the guides, they kind of got it a bit, you know, at the top, when you had a big event, it's a lagging, and when you get down to the bottom, it's a leading. So we're kind of, we're on the same page, but it's not clear cut in, in 754 at all. So, so does that answer your question, Gear? Yeah, great comment. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to kind of table the discussion because uh, yeah. leading indicators is such an important part of, uh, of process safety. And that's why bow ties, you know, and these scenarios give you a great way into determining what your leading indicators. I mean, you don't try and measure everything all the time. That's a mistake most organizations make. You don't have to kind of wire in the performance of every barrier. You, you need to sample, you need to pick the most important and the most critical, the ones that are closest to the edge, if you like, in terms of a major incident uh, and measure those. Thank you. But get in touch if you want some more information. I'm, I'm happy to share any of that. David will share my contact details with you. Any other questions? Um, so um, Lorraine wants to know about human factors and um, yeah, and uh, Janet wants to know about environmental, and that's your pet topic. So I'll I'll come back to you in that, and I think Louise is going to chip in. Are you? Oh, I just wanted to say, David, 
I think that that this was a, a really good um, event. I my mind is just really going a thousand miles an hour thinking of all the different ways that this could be used. And when when Ian and Andy brought up the information on the um, leading indicators, I mean, there there's certainly some things things with that. Incident warning signs is something I've taught a class on a lot. I mean, I can just see a lot of different um, different avenues to to use this this same thing. So I was just going to say, I think it looks great. I'm willing to work with you however I can. Uh, to support you on this and just let me know and thanks everybody for being on the call and being this committed to process safety. Oh, th thanks Louisa, it's much appreciated. Anyone else got any any questions? So um had a few questions about languages. Um, so yeah, I mean the, 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 the same comment as before, you know, um, you know, these the, the text top and bottom could be could be languages. It could be symbology, whether it's Arabic. It could be, uh, you know, uh, Cantonese, Korean, Japanese um, characters. Um, but you know, at, at the heart of it are are the um, are, are the, the 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 symbols and the and the images. And you know, what what I want to do is is to work with you to help deploy your process safety initiatives. It's not to create something completely new. It's to work with what's already out there. And get it to people that possibly fall through the cracks in conventional training or, or conventional briefings or 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 whatever. Any other questions or or comments? You, you got my email address. If you think of anything, I'm going to send out the slides. I'm going to send out um the recording um with um, um you know um, with all your feedback on it um david i've already posted a couple things on linkedin and i'm getting getting some reactions on this so if there's anything else that you want me to post for links just let me know no oh, that's great much appreciated i hope the positive feedback you're getting Anyone get any more questions? Um, Ian's got a set of cards. Louisa's got a set of cards. Jan's got a set of cards. Does anybody want to, you know, Janet's got a set of cards. Does anybody want to say anything about the cards? Anything they like or dislike about the cards? I think they're really good, David. They play like a normal set of cards. The one thing I would say is that you can play bridge with them or cribbage. It's not just gambling games. <laughs> OK, OK. Well, David, so far in our house, no money has exchanged hands. Right. Can, can, well, I, just I, just, say, can I just say something? Sorry, sorry, Louise, I need to interrupt. Can I just say something really critical? And forgive me for, for my oversight. There are some cultures and some jurisdictions that we can't send cards to because it's gambling. So, you know, there, there may be ways around it to take the images off it, but you know, the, there are certain cultures and religions that we have to respect don't approve of gambling. So, in the same way that some of you couldn't access that online plane table because it may be perceived as gambling, you know, we may not be able to send the cards to everywhere because of your local restrictions. So please bear that in mind. Sorry, go ahead, Louisa. Oh, I was just going to say that um, the the cards are are made very well. They've got a, a nice um, plasticized coating on them so that they'll hold up, and uh, the weight is really good. So I think that anybody that that wants to wants to get some of these and you've got some uses for it, it would be uh, I would recommend it. Thank you, David. I've just thought of a new use for them. Just while you're speaking, haven't tried it yet, but I'll do it. We could make a house of cards, you know, stack them all up in a pyramid and hopefully get them all there without it collapsing like a major incident. But if it all fell down, you think, well, there you go, then that's which card kind of gave way. You mean you mean like this one, Ian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yes, I've just spotted it, yeah. Well, yeah. that just came to me independently, Dave. Yeah, great minds think alike. <laughs> uh, J Jan, do you want to share anything about the cards? Well, I, I, I just received them. Um, but they are yeah, very nice cards. Um, and I, I play with it. And it's just yeah, just normal cards and uh, excellent quality. Uh, so, But now it is for me the challenge to see, to make this card specific. Uh, for our organization. Sure. sure. So I really like this uh, ID. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're a little over time, but if anyone's got any last minute questions, I'll, I'll try and catch up in the chat and, and answer any questions that you got or you got my, my email address. So I really appreciate your, your participation. I really appreciate your feedback. Um, you know, I have to thank Ian. Ian. Ian's given me a lot of support in, in getting this um, so far. So uh, thanks, Ian, and, and thanks everyone who's, um, you know, given me um, some thoughts. Um, any any last questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Yeah, Thanks, Jan. So, Fr Francois, uh, you're given some packages missing the gaming ideas. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, sorry, it's just disappeared. Um, OK. Um, I'll, I'll leave it for a couple of minutes and then I'll, I'll close the meeting. So thank you again for your interest. and. Um, Let's see if we can do something with these cards. Thank you for the presentation very much. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Diane. OK, thank you, everybody. I'll uh, I'll close the meeting and then I'll send around the slides. And if you want a recording, um, I'll I'll need to um, tidy that up um, and I'll send you a link to it. So thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Stay safe. Thank you.